Hey guys, welcome to Alice Every Day, and today I'm going to teach you how to build a larger uh, birdhouse. Now you can do this with simple tools. I did use some power tools just to make this faster, but you're absolutely capable of building this with the simple tools that you have in your garage. Now before we get to the build, if you haven't seen my previous video on how to build a simpler birdhouse, I'm going to leave the link in the description down below or up in the cards. Now that house is made from very, very simple designs. It's some wood that you may have already in your garage and you use very simple tools. There's no power tools in that needed except for something to cut with. Now in this one I did use power tools. Uh, you can easily make this build without any power tools. It's going to take longer, but for the purpose of the video I did use the power tools. Now without further ado, let's get to the build. So guys, the first thing that you want to do is mark your boards and how you're going to cut them. What you're going to need is, I'm going to make this, my specific size is going to be about 12 inches and then it's going to have the top of the house. And the way I'm going to do is I'm going to make a first is a mark out 12 inches and from there I'm going to use my speed square to draw an X. It starts from that 12 inch so the actual peak is going to be about 14 inches and then I'm gonna make the X all the way across and then I'm gonna flip the square and finish out the other side so my peak of my X will be about almost 14 and 3 quarters now I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna cut straight through the X on both sides and I'm just gonna get that peak for the roof this makes a perfect 45 and it's just great angle to use I'm also gonna cut two other sides that are gonna be uh, 12 inches by 6. I'm also going to need one bottom plate that's going to be 6 inches by 10. And I'm going to need the tops of the roof, which are going to be 2 6 inches by 9. Now that is the complete cut list. And you're going to have your front, your back, two sides, one bottom, and then two tops. Now you do want to make sure there are no rough edges and there's no splinters. So at this point, I just sand it down just a little bit, every single side, and then you're gonna be good to go. Now the first thing we gotta do is after we've cut everything, we need to measure out where the entry hole is gonna be. Now I'm going to make mine, it's almost about three or four inches from where the roof line will be. So you just go down, find the middle of the board, and then I use the Forstner bit for this. If you have a drill press or anything else, just go for it. Now if you're going to do this by hand, make sure you do it very carefully and slowly. Now you're going to see that I did uh, run into some problem and the drill actually kicked back on me a couple times. And that is because I cut down right in the middle of a knot. I just made it very hard and it was just a pain to get through. Again, do this very slowly. Take the time. Do not rush it because you can get hurt doing this by hand. Always make sure to put a piece of scrap wood under whatever you are drilling into so that way you won't have tear out on the other side. And just make sure you cut all the way through the end. Now when you're done cutting, make sure you sand it just a little bit so there's no rough edges. Now we're going to move into actually assembling the house. 
what you're first going to do is grab the front and attach it to one of the sides. Now you want to make sure the side is on the inside part so that way your whole entire width of the house would be six inches. I just attach one side then go to the other and then just put some brand nails in the middle. Now you can definitely do this by hand. Just use regular hammer and some nails and you're good to go. After you got the first side, then you're going to put the other side. These are the two walls that are going to make up your house. Make sure you align them. And I'm actually putting these flush with my workbench so they actually stay flush all the way through. And as you saw before, I did not use any straight edges to actually make these cuts and that is fine. These cuts do not have to be perfect because at the end it actually allows ventilation room. So none of these have to align perfect. And you also should not use glue for this because you need those ventilation spaces and for the water to drain out as well. And the last part that you're going to put is the back side. Now make sure all of these are actually nice and tight uh, with some nails. And the bottom, you're not going to place the bottom yet. We're going to do that at the end because the bottom you're going to put screws, which this will allow you to actually pop the bottom out and clean the house whenever you need to. Now for the roof, if you want to make it symmetrical, you can just shave off uh, three quarters or whatever size that wood that you're using from one of the sides of the roof. Now I do not mind that it won't be symmetrical, so I just place one and place the other one right over. Now you do want to overlap them so you don't have a gap in the middle so rain won't be getting into the house. Now again, you don't have to put too many nails. This doesn't have to be perfect. If you have gaps, that is better on the side because it will allow for ventilation and just drainage for, from the bottom. And that's just absolutely perfect and fine. As I mentioned before, for the bottom, we are gonna use some screws for this. Uh, these are the only screws you will use in the entire build. Make sure you drive your pilot holes and you countersink this so it actually turns out very nice. And as I just said, you don't have to worry that it is straight. You don't have to worry that every gap is closed because you want these gaps. Now this process of screwing the bottom is could be a little bit hard. It just depends how you hold your house. Now it does help if you put it all the way upside down, but since the roof is angled, it might give you a little bit of a problem. After you're successfully screwed the bottom onto the rest of the house, you're good to go. So guys, I hope you enjoy this build. If you haven't seen how I build a smaller yet simpler birdhouse, I'm leaving the link on the description down below or hit the cards up there and you will see the video for that. Now in this one, I specifically made it tall and bigger because the other one was just a bit too small. I also added more space, more of a hangover over here. Now, if you are looking for specifics for specific birds or any details that way, uh, there's plenty of websites that will teach you how to make the exact birdhouse for the bird that you're trying to uh, keep around or help. Now, if you are concerned, um, I did not make any of the cuts specifically straight with a uh, table saw or anything that way. Uh, because this allows for there to be gaps for ventilation everywhere and also to drain at the bottom. Also very important is that you have to use screws for the bottom in order to be able to take it out to clean it once in a while. Now I know I had fun in this build and if you did as well let me know that in the comments or if you know somebody that might have 
fun building one of these over the weekend. Um, make sure you share with them. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next build.